for you know our, our, our last game of the year. Um, you know the opportunity we had going into Wagner still mathematically um, not eliminated from the playoffs. Um, you know, and after a, a a poor performance on Saturday where we didn't play our best basketball game and certainly didn't shoot the ball particularly well, I was pleased with the way we responded on Sunday against a team that is uh, the hottest team in the league right now. You know, I think we were uh, now won nine in a row and. Bosch has got an experienced, talent group, talented group, and uh, we knew it was going to be a big challenge for us. And uh, I was pleased with the way our guys responded on on Sunday and, and put ourselves in a position again to, to either win or tie a game with under a minute to go. And, and those opportunities this year have slipped past us a little bit, you know, those close games that, um, you know, the, the ball bounces or a possession here or, you know, you get another opportunity, you know, it's the, the fine line between winning and losing. It comes down to a couple possessions. And, uh, you know, I was pleased with a lot of things, you know, the, the performance of, you know, our young guys, Zari and, and Josh and Rennell, you know, those those three kids, if I correct me if I'm wrong, Miles, I think they all logged career high in minutes. I didn't take Rennell out of the game. Um, you know, Zari had 35 minutes and I think Josh played upwards of 30. And if he hadn't gotten his fourth foul, he probably would have been pushing 40 minutes as well. So, you know, with those three kids, especially those young kids, to be able to perform against an experienced, well-coached, talented Wagner team, it was something we were – you know, we were pleased with. We thought we could build on it, continue to build on with this group. Um, but certainly consistency has been our, our our struggle this year. And, you know, that on-court chemistry is something we've searched for all year. And it's and I've talked about it before, and it's you know, a big part of it is in the locker room. And we have that part. Our guys are close. They, they, they do a great job, and they've been through so much. But that on-court chemistry is, is something that, you know, we've – because of injuries and because of people being in and out of the lineup and because of so many young kids, it's been a challenge for us. And – I thought we took a huge step um, in that chemistry on Sunday. And now it's, I wish we had three more weeks to play. I wish we had, because I think we're you know, starting to get that turn to understand you know, what it means to play together on the court. And you know, one, of the, one of the things that we talked to guys, and so much as it shows up in points a lot, but we, we had two clips that we showed the team yesterday. And they came down to communication, because I think so much of chemistry is about communication. And I'm going to try you know, my best to, to show the clips here. And this is one, there's one in the first half. Um, and then there's one in the second half. And am I doing a good enough job, Miles? Thumbs up. I've, I've got it. All right. This was in the first half, and we had just um, – Wagner had just gone zone. And in preparation for this game, we got our guys in spots in the ballroom before the game to talk to them about some of our zone offense because I didn't think on Saturday our zone attack was what it needed to be. And uh, I put Marlin – in on the perimeter he started for us on the perimeter and the first two months of his career he was our our, our five man or scout team five man before the ncaa lifted the the uh the, the the transfer situation where they were eligible to play and then he spent a lot of time at the four and here i go and i i start him on the on the wing um you know and, and didn't really give him the tools to be successful especially early so he was a little bit out of position in this play and what we showed the team was and again you've got Zari, Rennell, Josh, three freshmen, Ramir, our senior point guard, you know, and, and our best player this year, and then Marlon, who is, what, 12 games into his St. Francis career after the NCAA's um, uh, waiver was passed. And where we've grown up as a team here is our communication. And early in the year, there was a lot of, you know, the body language stuff and people pointing and I think making excuses. And it's a great example that we showed the team here, Ramir leading the group and then Marlon listening. And so, you see, as, as, as they come into the huddle right here, Ma Ramir is talking to Marlon about where he needs to be in our zone offense. And Zari's kind of chiming in a little bit, but Marlon's body language acknowledging, yes, I got you. That's where I need to be. And I thought that that was a huge step for this group because so many times a young group spends their, their moments maybe arguing or, hey, I'm right. No, he's right. And you lose out on what the point is. I thought Ramir did a phenomenal job leading this group here you know, and showing them where they need to get. And Ramirez's his first year as a captain, and let alone being a captain during a pandemic in a year where he's had, as a point guard, had to deal with so many different lineups because of some injuries and young, all of those things. His growth, yes, you can see his point production and his improvement in the work he's done. But that right there is a great example of how he's grown as a leader. And then also those young kids and then Marlon listening to him. Because to be a good leader, you need some good followers. And I thought that that was a great example there. The other thing that we showed our guys, too, was, you know, it doesn't have to be just from our captains. It doesn't just have to be. Leadership doesn't have class. 
Leadership can come from the freshmen. It can come from walk-ons. It can come from scholarship guys. And the second clip was a great example of, of uh, one of our younger guys leading the way. And it was right in the middle, again, of, of uh, a, a close game, and, and, and they were making a run. And uh, I, I thought that, you know, again, I thought Josh in this situation was phenomenal at, you know, at, at leading our group and helping us out. And, and the situation here, you can see the score. It's 52 to 46. And we had, we had, I think we had an eight point lead and they started to press a little bit. We made some poor decisions against their pressure. And in this situation here, Ramir turns the ball over, comes back and Ramir and, and, and E Ford are good friends, fouls him. It's an and one. Now, I think if you look at the body language here, again, Rennell's kind of going, he's going to pick up Ramir, Zari and Miles in this situation. Look at Josh Cohen come out of, out of nowhere. And he grabs Ramir. Now that's a freshman grabbing two more freshmen and a junior. And, and, and I think that when you look at the thing that impressed me the most, and I'm going to go back on this because I love his effort. The play's done. He looks like he's sprinting for a layup, or he looks like he's sprinting for, um, you know, uh, to get back on defense. And, again, you have four guys kind of going in different directions. And here comes our freshman running down the court in a six-point game, which now is going to go to four and then a free throw, turn it into three. And you take a freshman bringing our guys together. We challenged our group. We knew it was going to be an intense game. And we knew that there was going to be a lot of emotion because Wagner and Bosch, they play so hard. And you know, we wanted to make sure that if we saw the guy kind of reeling, bring everybody together. And this was a great example, again, of Josh bringing our senior and our junior and our two freshmen. Look at him come flying into the screen here. <laughs> and he brings them together. And we get a tight huddle. Look, now, now Miles follows suit. And we've got a tight huddle. We talk about that. We move to the next play. You know, so those are those are two things. Again, they don't show up in the box score. And I don't know. It's 52-48. This free throw makes it 52-49. And I don't know what happens if Josh doesn't do that. But if we don't, you know, pull ourselves together and get to that next play, the run that Wagner was on very easily could have gone to 62-52, and they could have kept going and kept going and kept going. They're talented enough to do that. We managed to stop the run. It was back and forth for the next 13 minutes, and it was a great college basketball game. So, you know, those were two clips that we showed our guys that we talked about, you know, as we try to get these guys to understand the details matter. And, yes, you need to be able to make shots. And, yes, you need to be able to, to defend the other team's best plays. But the growth that this group has exhibited in the last, I'll say the last two weeks, can't be measured in box scores. It can't be measured in stats. And those are just two examples that we showed our guys. You know, so many times film is about what you did wrong. Those, those are great examples of communication and how we grew as a team this weekend. Now we got to get ready for a Mount St. Mary's team that's fighting for a playoff spot, you know, and is, is well coached. Again, they're very talented and playing, uh, you know, coming off a win against FDU. So we'll have our, our task, uh, you know, a tough task ahead of us. And it'll be an opportunity for us to honor Dan Henry, our only senior of the year. Dan's a walk-on for us and, and has been, uh, you know, a tremendous part of our program. You know, the, 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 the experiences that we can provide these kids, over the course of four years, he's going to go on and do great things. Fantastic student. He's getting ready to go to law school. And I know that he's going to represent not just his family and himself, but the St. Francis community when he takes that next step. Corey. You know, Rob, film sessions, we in the, the rest of the world, we hear about these things. But we just watch games. Fans, media, we just watch games. The, the things that you just showed – how important is it whenever you're able to sit down and show – maybe maybe those kids on the court realized some of that stuff with Josh running into the screen. Maybe they didn't at the time. But when you can specify and really point out those kinds of things, what what is the value of, of being able to really harp on that after the fact with a film session? It's important because you know, film film is such a great tool. And I remember the film sessions back in the day, the VCR, you know, the fast forward, rewind, fast forward, rewind. You, I couldn't get to that film session, Corey, as quickly as I would because we'd be here still trying to figure out that next step. And so film session has evolved. It's more immediate now. We can take that film and we have access to it right after the game. So as soon as the game's over, I'm on the bus watching it. And, yes, I watch the play. But I also watch the bench. And we're looking for ways that we can get these guys to understand how they can grow as basketball players. And then again, yes, execution is important. How you shoot the basketball, the technical side of it is so critical. But those little things, Corey, body language, how you act on the bench, when you come in and out. People ask me all the time, why do you use the batons? 
when you when people sub it in and out. Now we haven't used them right now, and I hope in a post COVID world, a uh, COVID era, I could get back to the batons. It's because I don't like when guys come out of the game and they just walk to the bench and sit down. I want them to have some interaction. So what it does is it forces them to have a dialogue with the guy that's coming in, and then when they go down, they you know they get a chance to slap five with everybody on the bench, get their water bottle, and come back and sit next to the coach so that they can they can be coached and they can be taught. I miss that. Because of all the spacing with the benches, you know, you look around and you're trying to find Ramirez and you realize he's, you know, 16 feet in the third row. And I know I, it's part of what we have to do, but I'm anxious to get back because we can't see the whole bench sometimes because it's so spread out. But they're so important, Corey, because those are the lessons you can talk about it. And a lot of times, Corey, kids don't realize they're doing it. I promise you no one realized what Josh Cohen did. I, I, I promise you. And I bet you no one on the bench realized what Ramirez and Marlon were doing. So when you can capture that on film, you can talk about leadership, and it's a tangible example. You can talk about how to bring guys together. It's a tangible example. And the film, it's the old, the eye in, eye in the sky don't lie. But, you know, we, you got to use those moments when people do right, when they do good things so that they can duplicate those things. And other people can do the same thing that, that Josh did and that Ramir and Marlon did. You know, I was impressed with that because, again, Corey, you've seen enough basketball. You know that this late in the season, our guys knew that they couldn't make the playoffs. And they very easily could have – Back down, Wagner's winning. You know, they very easily could have done not done the little things. But by doing the little things, they got to understand that if you keep doing what's right, in time your reward will come. I don't know when it is. I don't know what's going to happen on the basketball court. But those are the things that I was most pleased with, that I was most proud of. They keep doing those little things. And over time, they'll pay off. Do your guys know what a VCR is? <laughs> I think they might actually. Coach Helton. I think Coach Helton still might have one because he has a lot of VCR tapes, VHS tapes. I mean, he's been in this coaching thing a long time, and he'll pull some out, and he'll start watching some VCRs, the old fast-forward rewind. They have – I think they have an idea because they've heard about it, but I'd love to do a film session with the old fast-forward rewind. I remember those with Coach McConnell. Well, you know, hit, rewind, 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 that, rewind. You know? That's what I was going to ask you about. You played 25 years ago. You played in a different technological era. So for the to have the ability to pull up a digital clip immediately and show them immediately, as opposed to, I'm assuming everything you did was on a VCR. Maybe there were some DVDs when you played, but as opposed to GAs having to go through and and, and splice things up and take a long time. What is the difference in this era right now that young athletes can see it immediately compared to when you played? And, you know, part of the whole film session process is probably just fumbling through the VCR to get where you need to be. Yep. And I've been critical of technology in that when these kids get out of the game, automatically they get to their cell phones and, you know, they're texting with people who have watched the game. And so they don't have a chance to sit back and catch their breath and, breath and process. Okay, did I play well? Did I not play well? They, are, they automatically have, you know, 50 voices in their ear telling them what they did either well, wrong, or, you know – you should have done this or done that or the coach. Should have done. So as, as bad as that can be at times and you don't have kids, you know, with the opportunity just to kind of sit back and reflect the opposite side of it is the technology that, that, that you just mentioned, Corey, because as a staff, we have the way our technology is set up. Each player has an account through our editing stuff. So we can get on the bus and right away we can clip up Ramirez touches and send them to an account that he can have that stuff at his disposal right away. And he can see, hey, listen, I did this well, or I didn't do this well. You know, it's, it's at their, they can watch the film. They can pull it up on, on, uh, on NEC front row, or we have the ability once the film is done, they can, they can access it through that, 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 uh, uh, uh editing system. Now the, we can't teach, we can't talk until the following day. However, it gives them a chance to take a look and watch the film through their own eyes instead of waiting for a coach to, to, to regurgitate it. And trust me, these kids understand. They know. They know when they did right on the court. They know when they didn't execute or when they missed a, missed a play or missed a shot. They understand it. But now, when I played Corey, we, played, we would have played that game. We would have come back, had a day off. The coaches would have had to go through that VCR, stop, pause, stop, pause, and create an edit that we wouldn't have seen probably you know 36 to 48 hours after that game. And we're already on the next game. So it allows that immediate feedback and that attention to detail that these kids all want. They all want to be coached. Uh, they all want to see all their jumpers go in. They all want to see the good point, right? But it gives them an opportunity to write it away, and our staff does such a tremendous job of making that stuff accessible to them. 
that, well, that, that we can continue to coach. And one last thing along those lines, how much easier does it make it for coaches? Because you talked about it a lot of times from, from the player standpoint, but as you just mentioned, either you or assistants or GAs, you don't have to waste hours upon hours going through all this stuff so you can actually be more efficient with your time. Exactly, Corey. I remember when I did my first scout. I, I still remember who it was. Moorhead State it was my first scout, my first year. I think it was my first year in coaching. And it was deck to deck with the VCR. I was there until 4 o'clock in the morning because I didn't. I couldn't go home and do it. I didn't have that, that technology to be able to clip that stuff up. And I had to watch through, write down times, you know, match those times out, hope that the tape was zeroed out so that when I went back to do the edit, all the times worked out. You know, my first one, I'm making sure, I want to make sure that that thing is right. And we're going to play Moorhead I remember, Moorhead State. And it was 4 o'clock in the morning, and I rolled down to the hill. I lived in an apartment off campus at that time. You know, my scout was done. Now we can take these computers home with us, and I have, not only do I have access to our games, but I have access to every single Division One game in the country, some Division Two and Division Three games, some NBA games, or all, actually all NBA games. So the film right now is is right here on this computer, and I can take it with me when I go. Doctor's appointment that I got to take one of our players to, and I'm sitting in the. I just got to get Wi-Fi, and I can watch film. So yes, it allows us to be more efficient. And sometimes, you know, there's almost too much detail, Corey, because right? you end up looking at all that. You see, you know. After watching seven films, you know exactly how a guy ties his shoes, and sometimes it's information overload. It's a matter of processing it now to give your team the best chance to win that particular game. Uh, just one last thing. How important for you after all of this would it be if you could get a win, maybe like a, a bowl game in football, that that win carries you through the off season? It'd be tremendous, you know, and I know our guys are going to come out and compete. I mean, anytime you can finish your season with a win, and there are very few teams that get to do that, Corey, as you well know. Obviously, the national champion, and if you don't make your conference tournament right, you get the, you know, you could you could win your last game, you know, all of those things that are a part of it. But that momentum's important. But I think the momentum's already been created, Corey, I really do. I mean, I think it's been created. It would be a, a, a great finish to the season. It's just important that these guys come out. They have one opportunity for Dan Henry as a senior – to compete with this group. This is the last time this group's going to compete together. You know, in, 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 in a pandemic, I'm so proud of the way that they responded, the way that they followed all the changes. But, you know, it would be huge for us to take that next step and win that last game and, you know, put us into, in a position to have a great offseason.